When you think of Tudor nowadays, you probably think of the Black Bay, and for good reason. It's probably warranted as being probably one of the best value for money watches on the market today. But as a result of its success, it buries other great models from the brand, like the Pelagos, the 1926, and the Heritage Chrono, and many others. However, the one watch that I think gets pushed to the back burner even more frequently is the Tudor North Flag, a watch that certainly isn't for everyone. So is the watch special, or should it remain on that back burner? Let's jump into this review. So before we go any further, big thank you to Bob's Watches. They're a partner of the channel. You guys are probably familiar with this, but they also help supply me a lot of the watches that I'm going to be reviewing on the channel. And it's a huge way to just expand the content, talk about watches that I would never be able to get my hands on otherwise. So I just wanna thank them for it. And then also, if you use the link in the description, any purchase of a watch also supports me and the content you're watching. You're always gonna get an authentic watch. And they have a really incredible operation of 30 people. I was really impressed with what they have going on there when I visited there just a couple months ago. All right, so now this watch at a glance. For a case size, we're looking at 40 millimeters, case thickness of 13.4 millimeters, lug to lug, we're looking at 50 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters, movement is an automatic in-house, we'll go into a little more detail about that in a moment, crystal, sapphire crystal, and has an integrated bracelet, and comes in with a retail price of $3,675. So the Tudor North flag draws inspiration from a few vintage pieces, but plays off them well without replicating completely, like the vintage Tudor Rangers and an obscure Rolex date reference, 1530. Incorporates the same integrated bracelet style that this North flag utilizes. Now this watch has a few different design traits that I believe lead to it both becoming noteworthy, but also perhaps being dismissed by maybe some potential buyers given its unconventional look, especially when you're looking at the Tudor and Rolex catalog. This watch is undeniably a watch lover's watch with its design. The watch features a unique case where the watch doesn't really even have lugs, but two extended surfaces that propel outward that house an integrated bracelet, giving way to a retro 70s design. This watch comes with both an option for a steel bracelet and a black leather strap with yellow accents that complement the dial. If I'm being honest, I think I prefer the bracelet version as it fits the more tooly look and adds to what is already a substantial watch on the wrist coming in at 50 millimeters lug to lug, but still a very wearable 50 millimeters lug to lug. A watch probably a little bit too large for my taste given my six and a quarter inch wrist or 15.9 centimeters in size, but I think it would fit comfortably on say somebody's wrist that's maybe six and a half inches or larger. Given the sharply angular profile of the watch, it does wear a bit flatter on the wrist than what the thickness might indicate. When looking at the side profile of the watch, we see a protrusion with a ceramic ring bezel topped with a stainless steel ring that is in view when looking at it straight on. The dial showcases a couple peculiar choices with distinctive design from Tudor with the yellow loom filled second hand, the yellow minute track markers at the every 10 mark on the innermost raised part of the bezel and the yellow markings on the yellow power reserve indicator, which is of course notable just for its color, but just its existence alone is something not seen on many Tudor Rolex watches. All these more eye-catching visual attributes are met with a restrained, simple, but well-executed black dial. The matte black dial is being a hallmark on this watch as well as the Pelagos that has always been really pleasing to my eye and I've liked a lot. The watch balances out the power reserve at the nine with a date window at the three o'clock. The hour markings are traditional applied stick markings, loom filled, and then we also have a large 12 and six numeral on the dial with the same effect as those traditional stick markings. The screw down crown at the three features a Tudor logo stamp and manual winding capabilities that I must admit is fun to partake in as it makes the playful speedometer style power reserve indicator at the nine filling up, feeling a lot like the process of having your car go from empty to full on gas, except this piece of satisfaction comes free of charge with the watch. However, the two most noteworthy aspects of this watch actually take place when flipping the watch over. One being the open case back, a feature not available in pretty much any other Tudor Rolex sports watch that I can think of in recent memory, and also the movement inside this watch. So in 2015, Tudor introduced this first in-house caliber with their North Flag, this particular movement, the MT5621. It's a no-nonsense, cost-certified movement featuring a 70-hour power reserve and operates at 28,800 beats per hour, or four hertz. The free-sprung balance wheel is held by two bridges and features an anti-magnetic hairspring made of silicone. So in conclusion, this watch again is a watch lover's watch, similar to someone wearing a Rolex Explorer 2. This isn't a watch that a regular guy who has a few thousand dollars to blow would buy. It's, it's a watch bought with intention by an enthusiast, and a particular watch enthusiast at that, 
who wants a tool that doesn't necessarily want to follow the rules. In addition, the watch represents a special time for Tudor and has all the signs of being a future cult classic in the collecting community with its movement and of course its unique design and really does mark a period of revitalization for Tudor as being a brand that sure lives in close proximity to Rolex, but demonstrates with this piece its willingness to step up to the plate and develop a more distinctly defined independent identity. All right guys, so what do you think of this watch? Again, this is just one of those watches that I think, for one, it brings a lot to the table in terms of what it represents for the brand in which it calls home. Uh, of course, I don't think this watch is for me and my standard, my wrist size, and a lot of other factors. And I think this is just one of those watches that, for the right person, is a match made in heaven. If you're looking for that tool watch, good in-house movement, and having a good representation of maybe showing how a brand kind of extends their boundaries. This is exactly what this watch is for Tudor, and I think it should be considered by people that are looking for that very versatile tool watch. But love to see comments down below, guys. Also, big thank you again to Boz Watches for sending this watch. Again, follow the link in the description. You buy anything, big help for me. Also, if you head over to our watch strap store, and yes, I want, when you think Teddy Balnassar, watch straps. That's what I want to think. That was my dream when I was growing up, I promise. Not really. But <laughs> it'd be of great help for just keeping this going forward in the content and, and driving this. You'll get a great end of it as well. And you'll also get some more great content from me and helping uh, me just support kind of what we're doing here. Finally, if you want to join our watch giveaway, fill out our watch giveaway form and then follow me on Instagram as well. We have some great giveaways teed up to come out. So definitely want to enter to win that. So guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.